Speaks Live here in the Unirac booth at Solar Power International 2016. I'm Kelly Pickerel, Associate Editor of Solar Power World. And today I'm here with Tim Drappy. He is Director of Purchasing for Solar Panel Manufacturer Solar Tech Universal. So thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Well, first let's start off with Solar Tech. You guys are newer to the market. So, what kind of modules are you guys producing? Uh, we are currently manufacturing two 60 cell modules. One utilizes perk cells and the other uses a multi-junction or a heterojunction cell. Uh, specifically, we are making modules that do not have bus bars on them. We use a technology called smart wire interconnection technology uh, in lieu of the bus bar connections. Okay, so let's talk about that smart wire technology. Like you said, it's basically in place of large bus bars. So what difference does this make for a solar panel? Uh, there's many differences. It starts actually at the cell level. So in cell manufacturing, the bus bars are made from silver primarily. So by removing the silver out of the manufacturing process, you stabilize the cost of the solar cell, which is very important. So our manufacturing costs are very stable. From our perspective, in the manufacturing itself, by removing the bus bars, you, you do not have to apply so much thermal stress on the cell during the manufacturing. So bus bars connect to each other with, with bus ribbon, and bus ribbon is soldered onto the cell. And when you add this very high heat onto the cell, it creates a thermal stress and that stress can lead to micro cracks, which leads to a reduction in power on the cell. And when you add up all of the cells with micro cracks and then all of the modules in an array, these incremental uh, small losses become very large. Another advantage is that they are so narrow, they're only 200 micron in diameter, uh, that they only cover about 2% of the cell. So the cell surface has a significant amount less uh, coverage on it from shading. So you're actually able to generate a little bit more uh, electricity or electrons are free. Uh, and therefore you're adding power and adding collection and reducing loss. So th this is the real benefit of, of, of smart wire that you're able to get these small incremental gains that when you add it up over a large array is equals a lot of power, lower cost per kilowatt hour, and that's what we're here for. Okay, great. You guys are involved with PERC, and that is a very popular buzzword um, for the last few years. So do you think it'll eventually become commonplace? Will all manufacturers have a PERC line? That's a good question. Um, there's a this kind of debate in the in the solar world because um, we we know that we're trying to squeeze more into less and get more out of less. Um, so currently, the what we see are uh, perk and and multi junction cells, which is the other type of cell that we use. Uh, what we see from the cell suppliers are we we see a lot more of the suppliers converting to perk and not to heterojunction. My intuition is that it's a cost, it's that, the, that the PERC integrates very easily into the existing line and heterojunction is more of a new process uh, for them. And so I, I think that we're gonna see a lot more of the manufacturers converting to PERC and you see already some of the real heavy hitters have already done this, your solar worlds. Um, they're, they're, you know, these guys have already converted to PERC. So you're going to start to see some other companies come into it. Uh, but I, 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 I'm, I don't know. I, I would yeah. think, I would tend to believe that, that it's either going to be a PERC or a, a multi-junction and then adding bifaciality to either of those, um, which is going to really up the power. Okay. You kind of mentioned bifacial. Things. Do you think that's going to be the next buzzword or the fresh technology that's going to take off? <clears throat> well, you uh, just being in here for five minutes, you walk around and, and everybody's got a, a glass to glass module. Uh, we launched one at uh, Intersolar in, in, in uh, San Francisco. Uh, it was received very well. Uh, I think the, 
the we, we are we would like to really uh, move that forward. We have a second facility opening in San Herman, Puerto Rico, uh, which will be commissioned and um, ready for production in about Q417. And the focus on that will be 72 cell bifacial glass to glass modules. Uh, these modules will be somewhere about 375 front side flash with a 25% backside uh, gain. So I, I think that you're going to see um, a lot more of the bifacial uh, modules, the glass to glass, and, and you're going to see with the increase in, in building integrated PV in your facades and your um, window structures, direct glazing, and things of this nature, roofs are already showing, you know, the, the, that slate the, uh, roof application where you can put it in lieu of your roof. Um, so I, I definitely see that being um, where the industry is headed. Uh, I think from what we hear from our installers and feedback is for rooftop, they don't really understand how to um, install it. And so that's something that we're here to find too, is to get, find manufacturers that are specifically making racking solutions for glass to glass, because that, that will help us help the installer. And that's what will get these things on roofs. Right. Okay. So are you seeing any other trends in solar panel installation techniques? Well, the, we just had a really interesting meeting with a company, a very large company, that is interested in doing these floating solar arrays, which you see, uh, and they're very, that's a, to me very interesting because you now have, um, you're utilizing a, a, a space, a, a reservoir or a lake that would otherwise be not, not that there's no value to it, but there's no, no power value to it, uh, and you're putting a, an energy creator on it that will operate at a lower temperature because it's over water. And that's a beautiful thing because you're the, the, when the module operates at a cooler temperature, it generates more power. And so you're essentially taking what is you know dead space and creating a not only a, a, a solar array over it, but a, a very efficient one that's gonna operate at a very low temperature. It'll keep the module uh, operating longer, and um, so that's something that we were we're seeing. And then, like I said, the building integrated um, PV, the direct glazing, the windows, um, facades, walkways, lanai's, all all those really cool type of applications. So it's really exciting, really exciting stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank Tim for talking with us about some solar panel trends. Thank sure. you very much. Sure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. it. I'm Kelly Pickerel with Solar Power World, and we're here in the Unirac booth at Solar Power International, where Solar Speaks Live. Tune in a little later for some more interviews. We have Glenn Woodruff here uh, at Solar Power International from the Solar Tech Universal team. Uh, Glenn, tell us a little bit about what you uh, can see coming out of um, Solar Tech in the future. Well, first off, uh, we just reserved our booth for uh, uh, Solar Power International 2017, so we're really excited about that. Um, you've seen a little bit of a trend toward uh, glass on glass uh, bifaciality of cells in this show, and uh, as we've talked about previously we're on the cutting edge of that and we think we have a better product uh, and a better technology for those applications and we're excited about showing those uh, at future shows throughout uh, the 2017. Perfect thank you so much see you soon. Yeah.